Well, as a, as a proud Red Raider, last but certainly not least, we now honor Joe Kirk Fulton. The American Quarter Horse is better for having Joe Kirk Fulton on its side, not only as an owner and competitor, but as a breeder for 50 consecutive years. The 78-year-old Lubbock, Texas businessman and rancher says, they've been my hobby, they've been my love. My dad bought me my first quarter horses when I was 14 or 15, and from that day forward, I've just continued to acquire good mares and tried to raise some awfully nice colts. We've been fortunate that we've raised a few pretty nice ones. Though he grew up an only child, Joe Kirk was never alone. He was raised with a few backyard horses on a small acreage near Lubbock, where his family made a fortune in banking. His ties to Lubbock grew as he attended Texas Tech University. Joe Kirk was asked to be the Red Raider mascot. He became the very first masked rider. On New Year's Day in 1954, he led the Red Raiders onto the field at the Gator Bowl. A newspaper wrote, was the most exciting entrance a team had ever made in a bowl game. Joe Kirk and his father also developed a major cattle operation on the Kinsabi Ranch near the Texas panhandle town of Channing. Throughout the 50s and 60s, he showed halter and cutting horses, culminating with him and his father breeding and raising American Quarter Horse Hall of Famer Peppy Sand Badger, the legendary Little Peppy who won the 1977 National Cutting Horse Association Futurity and 1978 NCHA Derby before becoming one of the all-time leading sires of cutting and cow horses. Before little Peppy was even nursing his mama, Joe Kirk began turning his well-honed eye to racing. In 1973, his homebred Flaming Jet ran second in the All-American Futurity. The third all-time leading breeder of racing quarter horses, Joe Kirk has bred the earners of more than $16 million on the track. Joe Kirk says, the thing I like most is to raise a colt and race it. That's where I get my pleasure. He points to world champion Dash's dream, both as his greatest pleasure and as the pinnacle of what he's accomplished with quarter horses. He's spread the dream around to others as the breeder or owner of stallions that have sired the earners of more than $60 million. That kind of expertise led to his service as an AQHA director and as chairman of the AQHA Stud Book and Registration Committee. Joe Kirk is a former president of the Texas Quarter Horse Association and an out-of-state director for the Oklahoma Quarter Horse Racing Association. He served on advisory boards for Los Alamitos Racecourse, the Veterinary College at Texas A&M University, and the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. Joe Kirk's fascination with the fastest and most versatile horse on earth began long before winning races or bringing home blue ribbons was any kind of concern. As lifelong friend Ray Weed recalls, when we were in high school, one of our mutual friends would tell me, well, Joe Kirk's gone to Kansas to look at a quarter horse. And I'd think, why in the world does Joe Kirk have to go to Kansas to look at a horse? There are plenty of horses here in Texas. But that's how much he loved them. Keep this short because making speeches is not one of my strong suits either. This is such an honor to be recognized by your peers. The Hall of Fame is almost beyond comprehension. At this stage in my life, I can tell you how much I appreciate it. I'm 79 years old now. I've been riding horses since I was about five, and I've been raising them for over 50 years. 
They are my life. I thank my grandfather who gave me a great background in love for agriculture and my first horse, Shorty. He taught me so much and my parents who raised me right and gave me my first quarter horses. I want to thank AQHA for making it possible for me to have developed so many friendships in the Horde Horse Association. I've been so blessed with so many good horses. Dash's Dream, Special Leader, Reckless Dash, uh, Flaming Jet. Fashion is an attitude. Daring difference. I think, quite frankly, that my horses speak for themselves on what they've accomplished. I never did it for the trophies, as they said in the speech leading up to this. I enjoyed trying to figure out which mare to breed, which stud, raise the colt, and run them. That was my pleasure. It still is. Having said that, I didn't do it all on my own. You have to have a great team to accomplish anything, and I was very fortunate that I had a lot of great people working for me. Uh, I want to name a few. My wife, Merle, for standing by me all these years, and for her love of the horses, the same as mine. I'd like to thank my son, Tim, because he wants to follow in my footsteps and serve our brand. I've had many friends along the way, people that helped me in the breeding. I have a great relationship with Clarence Garber, B.F. Phillips, to influence my breeding program considerably. I've had... Uh, Great friends like R.D. Hubbard, Ed Allred, and I think we all ought to give them a hand of thanks for what they have done for the quarter horse racing industry. I would like to thank a lot of my friends like Johnny Jones, Jerry Wendell, Martin Clark, Jim Helger, Patty Colbert, Ben and Christine Hudson, Sandy Irwin, Jose Dominguez, David and Susan Mackey, Danny Cardoza, and Kenny Hart, who uh, rode so many of my horses. Then I'd like to thank Mike and Leslie Turner, who were heading up my breeding program at the ranch. And did a fantastic job. Uh, I'd also like to thank Dr. Bob Lewis, who saved Dash's Dream's life, Bruce Reeves, the Kinsabi Cowboy, who broke little Peppy, Buster Welch, who rode him to the Futurity Championship. I'd like to thank Mike Robbins who trained Dash's Dream and Special Leader, who both became world champions. I think people like Kelly Long, who was Mike's assistant trainer, Randy Chamberlain. I give a special thanks to Jerry, Mikey, Jose, Adam, and all the people that worked for me, all the blood, sweat, and tears they put into my day-to-day -day operations. There are so many others that I have to apologize right now for omitting. You're not forgotten are not unappreciated, but I was told to keep this speech short. <laughs> so I'm going to. So just let me say to these people and those horses that have been such a huge part of my life, they helped guide me on my path. The horses gave me passage over the path. My horses soothe my soul. They feed my spirit. My horses keep me going. They keep me alive. I still ride my horses every day and check the mares and colts every day.
Now, as I exit the stage to return to my seat, the humble, modest human you all know and love, thank you.